Lansing's fascination with wood began as a young boy. So it started a long, long, long time ago. Uh, my father actually uh, built our house um, in Newton, Hampshire, uh, 1954, I believe it was, 55, somewhere in that time frame. Al lost his father when he was just nine years old, but shares his love of building and creating decades later. Wood turning is taking a piece of wood and then you put it on your lathe and you start to, start the lathe up, the lathe turns and you start going in with different gouges, different size gouges and you shape whatever you make. Wood turning began as a hobby. He was blowing off steam in his wood shop. I had a full-time job. It was, this was more of a stress relief job for me. Everything I made at the time, I was just giving away. And I, and I pretty much concentrated on bowls. In my opinion, they weren't very good. But after a few lessons, that changed. Do you remember the first item you sold? It was a bowl. Yeah, <laughs> it was a bowl, and it was actually up here at the Hampstead Middle School. Al's bowls, especially his bowls that retain the bark, are among his specialties. I cut a log, typically about 16 to 18 inches long. Then I cut it right in half. So now, I have two halves with the bark going this way. And this beautiful design created with the help of an insect. This is actually in what's called an ambrosia maple. Beautiful streaks here made by a beetle that the woodpeckers go after. And if the wood is damaged by nature, it's that authenticity that is part of the piece's beauty, like this large bowl. This is just on an, at the edge of the tree where there might have been a branch going out that kind of like was rotting and that's what creates these, creates some of these holes or some of the picture, um, the figuring. You can see that actually there's some worm, worm holes in here. That's what, that's what these holes right there are. Al's favorite woods are maple and cherry. I like to see the grain. I like I like to see the grain, and I like to see what the pattern of that grain is, because when I'm looking at a piece at, at a log, I uh, sometimes will sh turn it or shift it slightly when I start cutting it, just so I could try to enhance that grain. Al hates to cut down trees for his work. His trees are either brought down by weather or age. He then turns the lumber into vases, plates, vintage salt and pepper shakers, every piece as unique as his art. Now I've been to a lot of shows over the years and I go and look at other people's, you know, stuff, their, 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 their bowls, their various creations, and I feel that my stuff is just as good. Artist Vivian Jakey keeps fall alive all year long. At the Stone Gourd, Vivian's canvas is these funky shaped green and orange fruits. She believes just about anything can be created from a gourd. Oh, wow. They're lots of fun. You, your imagination can just go, and the things you come up with are just... Ideas are everywhere. They run rampant. We met up with Vivian on a rainy day at her home studio in Ware. Look closely. Her gourds even hang in the trees, giving birds shelter in her gourd birdhouses. Vivian's favorite pieces to carve are fairy houses, or gnome homes, as she likes to call them. I love gnome homes, and this was a big bushel gourd, and it 
goes all the way around and I try to use as many natural elements as I can. That's reindeer moss and there's wood, there's clay, and then they're all set on what's inside. Oh, this is on. where the gnomes live. So popular that she sells kits for folks wanting to create their own fairy house. So that's one of my biggest sellers is the kits where I've done everything but decorate, but I've included all the fun stuff so you get to create your own, build on it, and so many people collect different things, but they don't have any place to put it. I give it at home. So it's, it's really fun to be able to do the fairy houses because everyone can make it their own. Stained with leather, Vivian's gourds closely resemble finely crafted wood. She makes gourds for Christmas and Easter and Halloween, featuring a very famous TV family. I started off with just making Cousin It, and it morphed into the whole Adams family. We have Gomez, Morticia, Lurch. And then there's this. Gourds that make noise, loud noise. They're called thunder gourds. And depending on the thickness and the shape of the gourd, they all have their own unique sound. Nice part about gourds, you never throw anything away. You keep all of your pieces, your shards for practicing, making jewelry. I made some little earrings here and it's, it's just such fun.